You're listening to Experience This, a show about the emerging experience economy with your host, Tom Young. Hi, everybody. Hey, welcome to the show. I'm sitting here with uh, Kieran Bajwa down in the studio. Hey, Tom. How's it going? All right. Hey, we did our last show on the Netflix documentary, Minimalism, and Mm -hmm. uh, driven a lot of conversations. We got a lot of feedback from people who said, hey, that's a really interesting concept. Yeah. And uh, you're driving our team to do the 30-day challenge. I am. We're in day number two now. Yeah. I've been getting rid of a lot of stuff, but (laughs) I think I need a 300-day challenge. Uh, I'm not sure what 300 is on some of your digits, but I think I might have enough stuff. (laughs) So anyway, we started uh, thinking about, you know, the conversations extending beyond what we talked about in the last podcast about just really getting rid of a lot of stuff. And a lot of the minimalism conversations are getting rid of your physical stuff, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. And uh, one of the key recommendations from the, the minimalists, the two guys that were in that pot, was to digitize things that you can. Absolutely. But then we started talking about <laughs> <Where did> the- <laughs> digital, digital clutter. Yeah. And how, while digital clutter is better than analog clutter, it's still clutter. It is. And... It it creates um, well, it's just not ideal. What what are your thoughts on that? I think we've got a lot of devices in our house now. So most people have TVs that are linked to Apple TV. We all have laptops. We have iPads. We have iPhones. And when you think about the digital assets across all of those devices that we use, it's still a lot of clutter. And I don't know about you, but me, for example, I even keep work folders from, you know, as we in consulting go from client to client, I hold on to these folders of work (laughs) that I've done at one client and bring it to the next client. So uh, you probably have thousands and thousands of these these digital assets in forms of photos, videos, files, apps. Well, I haven't deleted email since 1998. So it's now, it's 2019, so we're in the 21st year. I have no idea. Now, I have my computer here because I I normally don't bring it down the studio, but we had some clips I wanted to show. But just for uh, giggles here, I'm going to pull up uh, on my phone how many unread emails do I have. (laughs) I'm excited to see this. It's uh, it's more than you think. Just take a guess. Uh, 5,000? You're not going to believe it when I say it, but I'm going to say it and then I'm going to show you just so I know I'm not bullshitting you. 135,345. Oh my god. Here it is. I don't oh think I don't think it can go to seven figures on gosh. the the on the screen here. Um and see, doesn't that the red icon that's in the top right corner of each of the apps? Like it, does that bother you? Cuz it kind of gets to me after all. It's like how do I reduce this number? But you just cannot you can't uh, Especially on, the email number on the ale, on the mail icon on my phone. It's a it's a permanent fixture. <laughs> yeah, I think for most people. <laughs> I, I when I see it on the text icon, I, I go check it out to see who hey, who texted me. So I so some of the apps you do it, but this you know what each person does. But this notion of digital clutter, it well, let's put it this way: digital is better than analog it is. in terms of clutter, but right. it's not good. No, and. So one of the things I gotta I'm gonna pull up a list up on the screen here, and talk about some of the 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 different areas of clutter that we see in in our digital world. So let's just start with I just talked about this uh, inbox messages. You know why do you know the question I have is why do I have email from 2002? I just do. Again, it's back to it's the same it's the same mentality, right? Of of it's almost a hoarder mentality now in the digital space. I think it is. I'm sure there's a pathology. There's some psychologist uh, listening, trying to schedule an appointment with me. But um, I do it largely because if I, you know, think of our business. Yeah. I like to reuse prior work product. The thing is, you never do. No, and you, but you always think it's just in case again, right? We all well, think. it's more like this. There's nothing that we would do of value where I'd have to reach back more than 12 months. Yeah. And then whenever you do reach back more than 12 months into your email archive, there is um, 
you rarely use it. It's like, I can't believe my work product was so garbage <laughs> eight years ago. I know. So there was this movie, and I'll see if we can find the clip if it's available. It was a movie called Her, where mm-hmm. Scarlett Johansson plays the operating system. Yep. And she's booting up and learning the character, Theodore Tromley is the main character played by Joaquin Phoenix. And um, he's like saying, well, I noticed you, same with me, I haven't deleted any of your email. And he's like, well, maybe there were some funny things in there. And the AI said, oh, okay. And the AI read the proverbial 100,000 messages and said, yeah, only 80 of them were funny and I kept those. And it was just instantly the AI t- did what, and that was it, and just decluttered his life digitally and saved the aspects of that. Yeah. And I think a, a lot of the digital technologies, and what the minimalists actually recommend is to declutter digitally but not delete. What they say is because storage is so easy to do that stuff, just simply declutter it from your presentation layer and take it and put it into an archive. If you haven't touched it in a, in a year, you're probably not going to touch it. Once a year, just move it into an archive. It's there if you ever need it, but it's not in your face. It's not messing up your current assets. I I also think about when, when people walk into their uh, garages or basements and the feeling of overwhelm that they have because of the stuff. It's the same way when you open your desktop. Sometimes I'm assuming that there's probably this feeling of oh, crap, I've got so much stuff on here. You feel overwhelmed yet again, even though it's actually not tangible. It's digital. But but the feeling that both of those scenarios give to a human right. is exactly the same. Yeah. So let's look at a, let's look at this list here. We've got uh, inbox messages, old documents, kind of the same thing, old software. I uh, On the phone, I, I use my mobile devices quite a bit. There's only a, so many apps you can have on your phone. I mean, there's a there's a storage limitation for sure. <laughs> right. But the, there's only so many pages you can put on the icons, and I max that out. So I don't actually know what happens when you download an app and there's no place for it to go. It goes into this. Well, don't, but have you used the folder function as well, grouping the apps? I have, but that seems, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I'm, I'm uh, yeah. I know how to do that, but then it's like it might as well be. I might as well just delete I, it because I, I can't exactly. find it. Yeah. So uh, I have a few of those. I and when it, that function came out, I started doing it, but I don't do that. So I don't know where these apps go. So now I have to use a search function to find the the apps, which is why what's the whole point of having the presentation? So you right? can't even see it when you scroll through your homepage. No. So then I went through for, the apps. I'm trying to figure out. Well, do I ever even use these things? And I just started deleting stuff. Yeah. And then it just sits out there in the cloud forever. So desktop icons mm-hmm. and folder icons, folder structure. Let me just go to number six here on this list. Oh, yeah. Photos. So pull up your phone and let's uh, just tell me on your iPhone, how many pictures do you have in, in, your, in, your, my, in your all photos? Oh, geez. I have 7,023. Do you really? Yep. So I have 7,957. That's horrendous. Between the two of us, we have almost 15,000 photos. Right. And and so the issue is I have so many photos now. I, I actually started to uh, create some folders for important ones. Like a lot of times I'll take pictures of documents, yeah. like a driver's license or a passport uh, or some document that I need, you know, like there's a barcode for your car key, I just, mm-hmm. those, those kind of things. My license plate, I'll put that into a documents folder because I have to reference that. Yeah. But- it seems like a pain, you, you, but the, the the new software is coming out where they it recognizes faces and you say show me that all the pictures of that and it combs it and it automatically grabs it out of your folder. That's oh pretty yeah, cool. that's really good. But the issue with so many pictures, this goes to the clutter issue. Mm-hmm. I have so much, I have nothing. Meaning that w- wouldn't it be better to have twenty pictures actually printed out and framed on the walls of your house than 5,000, 10,000, 15,000 pictures on your phone. Or if you go on a trip, you have the 10 best photos from that trip summarizing it versus 300 photos. And a lot of times people take 10 photos of the same object from a different angle because they're not sure which one they want to use in the end. So we took a trip last year to Bermuda, the team. I don't, and, and aggregately, I would say we took. A lot of photos. Yeah, a I don't thousand know. pictures. A thousand Who knows? Photos. I don't yeah. know. A thousand pictures. 
We're never going to look at a thousand pictures. <laughs> no. At best, we're going to look at three, four, five, and you're only going to look. We're only going to look at it occasionally. It's not something you're going to look at every day. And if you go back, say five years to a vacation you had, when was the last time you actually looked at the pictures? And when you, you know, when you had the your twelfth birthday and you got the pony, did you get a pony when you were twelve? I did not. But. Okay, but if you did get a pony, <laughs> maybe you have the pony picture. But very rarely do all these pictures that people are capturing with digital photos. There's no, there's no cost to doing it. But the aggregate cost of racking up a library of 20, 30, 50, 100,000 pictures over a lifetime, if you, don't, if you don't have access to what's really important, you miss out on that stuff. And so digital yeah. decluttering is something that's pretty cool. So I, I want to show a clip on the – we saw this from – it was a Harvard um, initiative. I'm going to show this clip here. I'm going to get it right because I'm going to give the right proper credit for this video. I think it was Harvard Innovation Lab. Harvard Innovation Lab. And this came out several years ago. We saw this on one of our technology scans uh, mm -hmm. about two years ago. But this video shows the evolution of the desktop from 1982. It's, it's fairly current. But basically, it takes the desktop that was cluttered with things like Rolodexes and fax machines and radios and clocks and calculators and phones and uh, staplers and scissors, all those kind of things, calendar, pictures, mm -hmm. even all of these things. And it shows how these things get digitized and put into a digital environment. So I'm going to play this and we'll talk about it. So pretty cool video, right? You get yeah, to you get really to see cool. the the whole analog decluttering end up with uh, a phone, a laptop, and sunglasses mm -hmm. and car keys, and everything that was on the desk before is now in a digital and it, and it's it's better. Yeah, way better. But the uh, I guess the pathologies of analog clutter, those same pathologies exist in a digital world with different consequence. Yeah, I totally agree. Right. So I if we were talking about pictures again, I could not um I could probably not afford or store th you know a thousand ten thousand pictures. Do you think that in some ways maybe the there's a um not a desire, but maybe someone doesn't want you to declutter digital assets? Like, I don't know. I mean, does Apple or like, I don't know, maybe there's an incentive for them for you not to, because I'm just thinking about the design of the phone and even the design of the red pop up of how many emails you have. Some in some ways, if that's up there, it, it makes me want to click on it because, oh, there's something that's, you know, needs my attention. This ties into the attention economy thing. Yeah, a little bit. So th this is where I think you get into uh, the perverse incentives of the digital economy. Where they're they're f and it, we 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 did a podcast called the attention economy, and we talked about the com competition for your eyeball time and basically your time as the commodity, and so these red things say, "Hey, come look at me, engage with me," yeah, and and then they try to go monetize that. So let's look at one more thing on the phone. Assuming you have your software updated, yeah, <laughs> uh, I don't know if I do, but. So if you go into the settings and just do a search on screen time, hopefully you have it enabled. Yeah, I got it. All right. So what do you? What kind of phone do you have? An iPhone X. Yeah. All right. So me too. So go to the, hit the iPhone X and get the last seven days. Did you find that report? Yeah, I got okay. it. Okay. So you tell you go first. <laughs> Three hours and twenty five minutes. Okay, that's pretty good. So 
Um, mine <laughs> is <laughs> six hours and 21 minutes per day. <laughs> Holy bleep. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But it, uh, the good news is it's up 56% from last week. Oh, now, that's great news. Um, I, you know, and then it, I'm, I, I'm not going to tell you like, you know, it's just, it's, it's just these pathologies have to end, uh, but <laughs> my mind, I just want to like, I have to say this cause this is pretty pathetic. So my three hours and one minute have been sucked into game of thrones dot fandom dot com. Like, you know, I started watching game of thrones and reading yeah. up on it. This is what happens. Yeah. So. <laughs> I, we, Rohan told us you're trying to read ahead to get the spoilers, so you just stop watching. Well, see, it doesn't make sense. I, I said I, I can't give that much time to sitting in front of the TV, so I'm going to read about it. But now my reading time has gone yeah. up by 36. percent So anyway, there's I I use this a lot for messaging, but I I don't know what the hell's going on with the six. I must have had I must have been drunk or something. But um, you know, like this one stupid thing here. The, they they introduced sports betting in New Jersey, so I got one of the apps. I've been playing with it, and I've been winning money. And it's like one hour and thirty six minutes. Uh, I guess in the last seven days, I'm just on the sports betting app. <laughs> Why? Why? Yeah. Nothing is nothing good is going to come from that. But these tools can also help us with yeah. that. And we can see what we're doing. So now, when I see this, I am going. If we talk about this later, I will not have six hours on this. Next week, because I, I I see this, I'm saying I'm just going to delete these apps, so I don't I don't I don't want them uh, cluttering my life, and I and I don't even think about it. Like if you told me like, did you know you were up 56 percent on your screen time? I thought I was high before. And now it's like now I'm off the charts. I'm in the uh, two or three standard deviations from normal. I guess the pop up does come up, but it's still not that. They still don't make it, you know, kind of in your face. Hey. It, you know, uh, rail this back a little bit. You're up 50% from last well, week. And they should do some cross correlation tabs. They say, you know, screen time up, steps are down. Yeah. Right. Life expectancy down, yeah. <laughs> whatever it might be. So these are, these are just things that when we talk about analog declutter, it's very important to do that. And digital converting your asset, your analog assets to digital is a way to help with your analog decluttering. But if you don't follow through and do digital decluttering, you end up with a different set of pathologies that I, I think are not that are not good. And I think even um, you know taking this into the corporate world, uh, all those employees that have laptops that probably have thousands to you know anywhere between one and six thousand files of of different Microsoft products of PowerPoints and Excel sheets, it, there's probably definitely a correlation. We'll have to look into the studies on productivity. You know, drink. We definitely see, we see it in our in our consulting work. However bad it is for us individually, it's much worse for corporations. Yeah, um, because the nature of the work creates a tremendous amount of digital exhaust. And on our uh, companion podcast, uh, "Pardon the Disruption," uh, actually one of the the first podcasts we did was on digital exhaust, and it creates a tremendous amount of digital assets that people don't know what to do with, mm. and the telemetry that gets created with like IOT and other things like that, that, that just generate a tremendous amount of exhaust. Like I, I installed security cameras, for example, and they're just recording constantly. Yeah. You know, uh, what do you do with that? And well, it's all junk. I mean, now maybe, you know, and so what they're doing in the corporate world is we're using machine learning AI to take something that has, and I'm getting too technical here for this show, but right. the, Think of the, the data in a data lake, mm -hmm. and you have a very low signal to noise ratio. And the what data lake is that one of the Finger Lakes? <laughs> no, just think of the metaphor of yeah, yeah. data is water, water in the lake, and a low signal to noise. What that means is, in a big lake, there may be only a gallon's worth of intelligence that you want, maybe ten gallons, but not the whole lake. And the issue is, in the absence of knowing what the ten gallons is, I could keep the whole lake. But I I am preserving it in just in case. Now with the, the some of the advanced software is coming out, right? And it hasn't really hit us. It's starting to hit us with on the iPhone. So again, if you go to the iPhone, you can look go into the picture and you and it'll show you they they create these 
uh, there's a folder called People and Places. Yeah, that's really good. So you hit this, you hit one of the people that shows up a lot in your pictures, and it shows every picture in your folder uh, with that, so that they're in it. Yeah, and it shows you the location and places where you took it. So this is the kind of thing where, when you can start to add these kind of tools, you can now start to put that stuff in there. But I think when we talk about the digital decluttering, it's I, t- t- to me again. I don't want to use too many technical terms in the show, but there's the, uh, the actual physical storage of the digital stuff, which is cheap, and you should just keep it all. Mm-hmm. But the presentation layer, what you expose yourself to, should be limited so you can stay focused. I agree. So I think your workspace, whether that's on right. your desktop or your phone or tablet, should definitely be very minimal. Right. Um, but whatever happens on the back end and where all that data sits. Because it, it, it creates a, um, an unnecessary distraction. So I have a Kindle and I have an iPad with the Kindle app on it. Mm-hmm. I read better on the Kindle. They both give me the same words, the same books, the same, et cetera. They have similar form factors. Right. Um, why do I read better on the Kindle? Because typically when I'll do it, I'll go sit out in the porch or I'll sit somewhere and there are no other distractions. I mean, the Kindle will let you do word lookups and a few other things like that. But behind on my iPad, the Kindle app, there is the rest of the world with one swipe, one (laughs) click away. And I get one thing popped in my head. It's like a, I'm a dog and someone said squirrel. (laughs) I'm turning my head. And I'm going to go after that, and you get distracted, and you end up not reading as much. So by simplifying the presentation layer, and that is how you organize your digital life and how you see it every day, that's when we talk about digital decluttering, that's what we mean. It's not deleting. If you have 10,000 pictures, great. Stick them on. Stick them in the cloud. Stick them somewhere. Maybe you'll go look at them someday. Maybe the software will be able to extract interesting things, like the way the iPhone's doing it today. Yeah. We've created a new memory. Have you seen that one? This pops up. Something from four years ago. Here's a picture oh, from yeah, four years for, ago. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's neat. It yeah, is. So, but it sits there. It's out of your physical thing, and it's just popped up to you. And then you start controlling that second layer. So again, when we talk about digital decluttering, whether it be email, photos, files, you have to think about how you get it out of your day-to-day workspace and into um, uh, yeah. – just simplify your presentation there. Make it simpler. So yeah. I'm going to try to get rid of, when we do this decluttering, I'm going to try to go through and just, you almost want to just start over with your phone, just wipe it clean and just say, know, hit the reset. what apps do I need? And, and wait till I need them before I download them again. It's really tempting when you go to get a, a new phone and they kind of ask you, do, you, do you want to bring in your text messages from your old phone? You're like, oh, do I though? <laughs> Uh, and, and so sometimes you do, but it's actually, it's great if you can say no and just start on a clean slate. Yeah, I, <laughs> I, I, I have all mine. I don't even know how big that file is. I think you can look up how big your file is. Let's let's compare that in terms. Now, this is to me, uh, I don't consider this digital clutter because it doesn't affect me on how big it is. But if you go on your phone and you do the storage, it'll tell you how big it is. So I forget how to do that. You go into settings. I don't know where the hell this is. General, iPhone storage. iPhone storage, yeah. And then that's going to come up with uh, a whole bunch of stuff. It's going to take a while. I have, I keep What I keep doing is upgrading my phone. I'm going to get the 10 terabyte phone uh, so I can store pictures. But messages I have, how big is your message folder? That's my biggest one by app. 3.86. Gig? Yep. What do you think mine is? Oh, geez. 18.9 gigs. Oh, my gosh. How yeah. is this happening? <laughs> I haven't deleted a text message since they invented text messaging. So, and I don't delete, I don't delete anything, so. You were probably on Apple's beta version and uh, you still got all your text. It's just interesting. I mean, and, and, and in some cases, the only thing I go back for in those old messages are pictures. You know, I was just noticing this is actually a pretty good feature. They have offload unused apps. And they tell you, uh, you know, if you enable that, hopefully if they realize you haven't used an app in a year, they'll recommend deleting it. 
Yeah. I should probably go read about this. But I only have 73 gigs used of 256. So I'm sure I can't fill this up before they come up with a phone that is one terabyte or a half a terabyte. So I'll just be able to keep going. <laughs> I'm not deleting anything. But I do want to clear up my presentation layer so that I have a more simplified situation and I'm not as distracted. So I'm going to try to make that as part of my decluttering when we get rid of our stuff and our our minimalization challenge. Yeah. I want to also apply it to the digital life. I don't, I, I don't want to create a new problem. I would love to minimize the red, though. Because the red just definitely, I think, you gets You probably me. turn that off. It's probably a feature. Or, or we've talked about it before, putting the phone on grayscale. Oh, yeah, let's, let, let's close with that because uh, we're at near the okay. end of this. So tell us a little bit what you do with the Grayscale. It's a new feature that, that they have on here. Yeah, so if you go into, again, into settings, uh, so I believe it's, maybe we can put it in the show notes, but if you go into settings and it, it might be in um, background or there's a, a way to change the color schema. But anyways, what it does is it basically puts your entire phone um, into a grayscale mode. So now... No colors. Zero colors. So it it, it kind of... Um, I definitely noticed that the instant draw or that magnetic feeling to the colors is taken out of the equation. So now when I'm it's interacting... Le it's less stimulative. Is yeah, exactly. It's totally less stimulative. So, so it doesn't make me you end up staying on it less because you're not that captivated by the colors anymore. So the, the, the experiment you need to run and then try, you need to try to do it in a way that's, that's not self-fulfilling, but it's to measure your screen time in grayscale for a week and then measure it off Yeah. without really trying to change what you would normally do because you're running the experiment. Yeah, I totally agree. You yeah. know, and it's probably one of the reasons why apps like Instagram are so successful because their colors are so vibrant that you just want to scroll and keep looking and keep looking because yeah. you're so stimulated, hyper stimulation. I'm, I'm so glad that I don't, that's not one of the apps that I have. I don't use Instagram. <laughs> I think I'm too old for that. Uh, and I don't want to do it because that's the one less addiction I don't want to have. So. Anyway. I actually don't have Instagram on my phone either, but I was just thinking, I wonder if you're in grayscale, does Instagram now come to you in grayscale and just all of a sudden loses its luster? That's a, it'll be a good topic for us to go look at in yeah. terms of the research on this. And uh, anyway, so this is pretty good. I'm looking forward to continuing this minimalist conversation. A lot of people are interested in it. Mm -hmm. um, it affects everybody, whether you're in the analog world or the digital world or both. And uh, we think at the end of the day, if you... Um, declutter your analog life if you declutter your digital life you'll be more happy yep is that fair yeah definitely and that's why we want to talk about this topic so mm -hmm. all right well thanks very much awesome thanks, sounds good Mike. hey thanks for listening to the show karen i think you were supposed to say that yeah thanks i'll take it from here all right well we got to do the this is the new outcast oh the out outro the outro the, i think outcast is a new word all okay. right outro we're doing a new outro we got to cover a few things all right one is what subscription do you subscribe to? We want people to subscribe to this, not just listen to it occasionally. Okay, yeah. Check the us out. The second thing is, nothing's better than what? A, a five-star rating. Always five stars. Got to give us the five stars because we get better search outcomes. Mm -hmm. And the last thing is comments. We need those. Yeah, we, we need your feedback. We want to know what people are thinking. So you can check us out. The best way to do it, if you're not sure, some people don't know how to do it. Go to our website. You can check it out. We'll have a full set of instructions. Uh, so whatever app you're using. Most people use, what do you use? Uh, I use Spotify. You do? Yeah. So we have Spotify, we have iTunes, uh, YouTube, there's a whole bunch. Of, whatever you use, we have it. And if, and if we don't have it, let us know and we'll try to figure out how to get it. We can send you a paper-based instruction. <laughs> actually, actually, we do have paper-based instructions, even though that's a fun inside joke to our team. So anyway, yep. thanks for listening and check us out uh, in our next shows. Thanks. See ya.